Hi, Simon here for your Ranalog Audio Design. In this video I want to show you the basic functionality of a walk for a Quad Brownian Accumulator. And before I tell you what a Quad Brownian Accumulator is, I want to tell you what you can do with it. You can use Walk 4 as a staircase, LFO or VCO. You can use Walk 4 to create a stepped Brownian walk. It's not the same thing as a stepped random voltage. You can use it to create sounds that resemble subharmonics. And you can use it to process external CV, like so. Let me walk you through the basic functions of Walk 4. If you look at Walk 4 as a basic analog accumulator, it's no surprise that there's a rate knob. The rate knob is our general clock, and at every clock pulse there is a value, a voltage added at each of the four accumulator outputs here. The amount of voltage that is added is set with the trend knob. So if I turn this trend knob completely down, you can see on the scope that my steps become increasingly small. And then when I turn it back to the right, you can see that the steps become bigger. So at each clock pulse, there is a value added to what we had. This knob goes from 0 to 5 volts, so let me set it somewhere in the middle here. So we start at 0 and then when the first clock pulse hits, there's well about 2.5 volts added to the output. Then at the next clock pulse, there's another 2.5 volt added to that output, etc. When we have the auto reset, engaged so in the bottom position the output voltage will reset once it reaches 10 volts this means we can use this as a vco when we switch this off you can see that the voltage rises to 10 volts and it stays there because it tries to keep adding two and a half volts but well it is clipped at 10 volts if i switch this switch in the lower position the clock rate is slowed down to LFO levels and then I should be able to show you how the steps rise until it reaches 10 volts and then it can't go any further. Keep in mind we have four accumulator outputs so there's four of these staircases coming out of the module even though we're just looking at one here. And you might think, what's the use if they all send out the same voltage? Well, you can send in individual voltages here that are added to the step every time the clock hits. So if we set this to zero, we can send in some random voltage. Let me just use select two to send a random voltage here. So now I'm controlling the size of the steps, not the length with an external module. You can also control the length of the steps, aka the clock. If you send something into one of the trigger inputs, you also have 
a clock output which sends out the clock oscillator. But like I said, you can overwrite this if you send in your own uh, slow or fast clock into one of the trigger inputs. These are normal from left to right, but you can break the normalization by patching something in here. You can see that this knob here is completely to the right. This is the constraint parameter. Currently it's set at 10 volts and it's not doing anything. But let me turn it to the left and closely watch the size of the steps here. At this point it's really clear. So I have it's somewhere around 5 volts here, maybe a little bit lower, which means that from the moment 5 volts is reached at the outputs here, the addition of additional voltages set by the trend knob, the value inputs and the trend CV input is constrained. So it's like a spring attached to 0 volt and from the moment we exceed whatever voltage is set by the constraint knob, the voltages that are added inside the accumulator are scaled down, which simply causes the steps to become smaller. Like I said, you set the value of the accumulation by setting the trend knob, which is a strictly positive uh, value. You can send in your own trend signal here. This trend value or CV input sets the voltage that is added to each of the accumulators, but you have individual value inputs which add or subtract from this voltage. You can send in negative voltages to these, by the way which means that you can get walk forward to go below zero as well, like so. We haven't talked about the volatility parameter yet, and well, I should say last but not least, because this, in my personal opinion, is what makes this module really shine. By setting the volatility parameter to something else than zero, you add a random voltage to the accumulator, so every time the clock pulse hits, the module looks at the setting of the trend knob and these CV inputs to know what it has to add to the previous voltage. But it also looks at the value of a Brownian noise generator, and there's four Brownian noise generators inside Walk4, one for each accumulator. So it adds a random value to the staircase. Which at audio rates creates this noisy tone. But let me patch this up to control the pitch of cycle 5. And you can see with the volatility set to zero and the constraint set to completely open, so there's no constraint at all. You can see that the steps all have equal size, the voltage jumps and the pitch changes in cycle 5 are exactly the same. But once I turn up the volatility, you can see and hear that there's a factor of random added to the accumulation. And keep in mind that the volatility parameter looks at Brownian noise, which can be positive, but of course also be negative. Let me also show you that you can turn down the trend parameter entirely, at which point the accumulator only looks at the random value created by the brown noise. And then I should turn off auto reset here. You can see that we get this interesting Brownian walk here. And this is simply because Walk4 is not a sample and hold module uh, sampling noise. No, it's an accumulator. So it always looks at the value of the noise when a clock trigger hits. 
and it adds or subtracts this from the previous value, which causes the outcoming voltage to be, well, a little bit less random, or maybe I should say the jumps are less big than with a sample and hold module, just sampling some noise. Also keep in mind that we have four of these outputs, so you have four sources of CV here. Let me repeat myself and tell you that we have four of these accumulator outputs, each with their own clock inputs here. And because the value inputs here are individual for each accumulator as well, you could create a few staircase VCOs maybe a staircase LFO and then one of these Brownian walk uh, CV outputs. There's an additional input here which is called the add input. This just adds a voltage just like it would be mixed in on an external mixer. It just adds the voltage we sent in. Currently this is an output from orbit 3. It just adds this to each of the accumulator outputs. Before I finish off the video, I just want to bring your attention to the fact that, of course, we have CV inputs for everything. There's a CV input or FM input for the rate oscillator or clock. There's a CV input for the constraint parameter. This is an offset for the knob or, well, the knob is an offset for whatever we send in here. Doesn't matter how you look at it. The same thing for the volatility parameter and the trend parameter. Like I said, we have these individual value inputs which set the amount of voltage um, that is added with accumulator for each of the four accumulators. This value is added to whatever we set here with the trend knob and uh, the trend CV input. There's a clock output sending out a square pulse of our clock. We can overwrite this uh, by sending in our own trigger inputs. These inputs also react to slow and weak signals uh, because they feature a Schmidt action uh, circuit. We have this add input that I just showed you and then there's four of these nice accumulator outputs. I hope you enjoyed this, well, kind of speed run of walk four. And well, you're probably not used to this from me personally. I will make longer videos about these modules on my own uh, Bris channel, but for now I hope you get an idea of what Walk for the Quad Brownian accumulator by your analog audio design can do. I hope you learned something and see you next time. Bye!